Okay, engineering folks, um, here's a video on how to do some centroids practice problems. This is your worksheet with like three problems. Um, I figured we could do the first one together and then you can do the other two. Um, I said show all work and label when you break a shape into smaller parts. I suggest you may want to put zero zero uh, in the bottom left corner. I always try to do that, the leftmost bottom corner. Um, to just try to um, make your numbers easier. You don't have negatives and stuff like that. So, all right, so first things first, let's break this into easier shapes. Now, there's a lot of ways you can break this into shape, but an I-beam is not something you can find the um, P, you know, the parts. There's a different formula for it, but I can, since I don't know the formula for an I-beam, I can break it into three pieces. This is piece one, this is piece two, this is piece three. So I label my stuff so when I'm doing work, I know which piece I'm working on. Now, we want to find basically the center of mass, which is the average X and the average Y for the whole thing. Um, so let's try it out. Let's look at each shape and try to figure out where its center of mass is and do this multiplication thing because the process we do here even though it's not the hardest shape ever um, is the same process you're going to use on the weirder shapes that are that are asymmetrical and stuff like that because um, I put the work there and then you can do the third one too. Um, what's weird is center of mass doesn't have to be on the shape itself so if you get an asymmetrical shape it's not crazy to have the center of mass just floating in the air kind of how high jumpers are able to jump over bars by doing this weird flopping rotation thing because they keep their center of mass below the pole. Anyway, fun little fact for the day. Um, so let's just break this down. I'm going to go after the x's. So first maybe I'm going to find my areas. Area 1 is a rectangle. What just happened? Area one, one is a rectangle, and I'm going to do length times width. So the height here is one. Well, I'll do L times W. So we have, let's call them, you know, inches. It doesn't really say, but we'll say one inch. And the width, since it's not, I mean, this was supposed to be drawn the same way. My picture got a little smaller at the top, but it's supposed to be three inches wide. So one inch times three inches makes three inches squared area. My area number two, um, we've got another rectangle, length times width, and we're going to do this is a width of one because you have three here, and then this is two, and this is one, so the distance between here and here is one inch. And the height of this thing this takes a little thinking, but if from here to here is 3.5, and this is an inch, then my height of 2 is 2.5 inches. So if I multiply those together, I get 2.5 inches squared. It's really easy when one of your numbers is 1. Okay, and then I need my area 3, pretty similar. It's another rectangle. And we're going to have the height is 1. Well, actually, is the height 1? Yes, the whole thing's 4.5, and we use 3.5 to here, and this height is 1 inch, and the base is 3 inches. So it's a very similar shape to the top one. It should be the exact same, actually. So I got my three areas. I'm going to use those later. Um, now we're going to do a column. We're going to do some columns here. We're going to have shape 1, shape 2, shape 3. Make sure you organize your work. And we're going to have a column for the area, and then we're going to have a column for the x bar, or the sorry, the x um, centroid part on each shape, and then we'll make a column of their products, which is a times x i. Okay, so let's try this. We got our areas three, two point five, and three. Now my x bar on shape one is 
the center, remember, if it's a rectangle, you want the horizontal distance, which is half the whole distance. So if the whole distance is 3 from my 0, 0, then the middle of that is 1.5. So we'll say 1.5 inches. Um, shape 2, kind of the same deal. Um, if this rectangle starts at 1 inch in and ends at 2 inch in, then the halfway mark here on the x's is 1.5 also. And the last one, this is 3 again, and the halfway point is 1.5 on the x's. Now I multiply those together. So 3 inches times 1.5, sorry, 3 inches squared times 1.5 is 4.5 inches cubed, and then this one's 2.5 times 1.5, 3.75 inches cubed, and this one's 4.5 inches cubed. Okay, we'll come back to that in a little bit. Let's do the same thing for the y's. So we're going to have our area. For shape 1, for shape 2, for shape 3. And then we're going to have, that's 3, 2.5, and 3. And then we're going to have our yi, which is the y part of our centroid. Now this one's going to be weirder, because all those were 1.5, which really common sense can tell you. It's straight down the middle. This is a symmetrical shape. But the y's are at different heights. So the yi, which means the centroid of this dude, is basically half an inch down from the top, right? Because the center of mass of a rectangle on the Y part is halfway down there. Well, what's a half an inch down from the top? If the whole thing is four and a half inches, and that's one inch, then half inch down would be 4.0 inches. Because I'm talking from this zero, zero point, how far up it is. That's where my centroid is. It's at 1.5 and 4.0. Now my 2, um, it's the halfway mark on here. Well, we already said this thing is is 2.5 inches high, because it was 3.5 minus the 1. And what's the middle of 2.5? Um, the middle of 2.5 is 1.25. But that's not 1.25 above the ground. You also have this 1 inch. So it's actually 2.25 inches up from the ground. Okay, and the last shape is halfway up here. Well, if it's one inch, then this one's the easy one because it's sitting on the ground. It's 0 0.5 inches. Now I multiply those together, a times yi, and we'll get 12 inches cubed. We'll get uh, 2.5 times 2.25. We'll get 5.625 inches cubed. The last one, uh, 1.5 inches cubed. Okay, so on that we have our totals. So now we'll get the actual average x value is made from taking the sum of the axis divided by the sum of the areas. Okay, so the sum of the AXIs is, we'll say total down here, we'll add those up, 4.5, 4 4.5 plus 3.75 plus 4.5, so this is like the sum of their averages, their weighted grades divided by the areas. So 12.75 inches cubed divided by their total area, um, which is going to be, I'm um, adding up these three numbers, so the total is going to be 3 plus 3 plus 2.5, which is 8.5 inches squared. So we're going to divide that by 8.5 inches squared. So 12.75 divided by 8.5, and you get the inches cubed and inches squared kind of cancel, and you get 1.5 inches left. Cool. And that's what common sense would have told me. Don't you think the center of mass would be the exact middle 
all the way up. Yeah, especially because they're all 1.5. Now this one's going to be a little weird because they're all at different heights. So let's actually do the same thing for the y bar. And that is the sum of the products of a times yi, which we just did in our columns, over the sum of the areas. Okay, so I'm going to make my, t oh, wait, my old total is 12, but it's 7, 8, which is cute. So we're going to add up these. My total yi's, I need to make these look good, yeah. My total yi's are going to be 12 plus 5.625 plus 1.5 is 19.125 inches cubed, okay, 19.125 inches cubed over 8.5 inches squared. If I do that division, I get 2.25 inches. So I know my exact middle is 1.5 inches to the right and 2.25 inches up is my center of mass. So 1.5, 2.2, 2. here's my full center of mass. It actually gets this symbol when it's the full center of mass. It's a weird, it kind of looks like a camera shutter if you've used a high quality camera. Um, so yeah, now this shape, I mean you could have guessed ahead of time, like where would that balance if I, if I had to balance that eye shape? But your other shapes you know, are a little weirder. Like this one's going to be a weird answer, and you have to go through the process we just went through. Um, and you can count these grid spaces. They're pretty light, but you can still tell what each one is, or you can take a ruler out and actually measure it. All right. So I put all the all this space for your work and all this goodness. Okay. So that's your process. I did it on a pretty easy one. You're going to apply that to the, to the other two. Maybe do this one next because it's it's a little, it's almost as easy. You can decide where to chop it. Am I chopping it here and make a little rectangle or do I chop it here? It's up to you. You'll get the same answer in the end either way. All right, hope that helps. Try those out. Centroids are, you know, their center of mass and there's formulas with which for us to get the answers. I gave you pretty easy ones because we don't have any like semicircles or weird things like that, but it'll give you the idea of how to calculate it. This would be something you would do in the intro civil engineering class, because when we, we're starting to do forces and buildings and stuff, the reason we're even talking about centroids is anytime you have forces, they uh, act upon the center of mass. So anyway, hope you got that. Try out the other two problems and uh, send me questions if you have them. Adios.